Welcome back. If you've been following along with the series, playlist in the cards now, we just fought Volvodon in the Four Star Village quest, Walk and Roll. Next up is Giganox, the adult version of the smaller Giggy. You should hunt this monster at least three times, as that's one of the requirements to unlock the drink quest, Terrible Poison Frozen Snow, to unlock another attack drink upgrade. Giganox is a flying wyvern, quite similar to another monster called Kezu, though instead of using thunder and paralysis, Giganox will be trying to poison you, and will lay eggs that spawn small Giggy to split your attention. If you're not careful or perceptive, your health will sap away to nothing pretty quickly. This monster can be quite tricky in a few ways. It will also teach and reinforce a couple of things about the game. There are a few moves that are avoidable, as long as you keep them in check, but can be very, very annoying if you don't. Not only that, with our knowledge of hit zones, you need to understand that it's not always a good idea to focus only on the weakest parts. That you need to have a secondary, or really, a primary target, and your highest damage should only be when you have the appropriate opening for it. Not all monsters are totally like this, but it's important to consider. All damage is good damage. A safe opening is better than an unsafe weak spot. As long as you're not bouncing, try not to be too picky. On the topic of not focusing purely on damage, bringing an armor set with poison negation is highly recommended. Sure, you could just avoid the poison attacks, but realistically you're going to be poisoned at least once or twice without one, and it can really be a detriment in a fight with a monster as fast and tricky as this. Not only will you have trouble finding a moment to use an antidote, but if he does hit you with one of his quick and confusing attacks, all of that red health from being poisoned is then gone, and if you're at low enough HP, you won't be able to recover in time and you'll just die from the poison itself, or from a Giggy latching onto you, because that's a thing too. Similar to Kezu, since they live in dark caves, their vision has degraded. They detect prey through body heat. Since they don't have eyes, flash bombs won't work on them, and its roar is powerful enough to require high-grade earplugs instead of regular ones in order to resist them. While it has wings, it doesn't usually use them. Not in a fight, at least. What it will do, however, is cling to walls and ceilings, changing the fight drastically and giving it some pretty nasty attacks. Its tail is capable of laying eggs that will spawn Giggy, but he can also trick you and lay down a poison bomb instead. This bomb does a lot of damage, and, of course, poisons you, so you need to be aware of it. If you break his tail, this poison bomb will take longer to detonate, which can help make escaping it a lot easier, but it can also make things a little tricky by making the area around the bomb dangerous for longer, if that makes sense. Breaking his stomach will drop a shiny to pick up, I'll cover material drop rates later on, and breaking his head will stop the poison clouds from his spit attacks from lingering. Finally, Giganox's body seemingly has two heads. One of them is real, and the other is fake. By default, Giganox has a softer head and a harder tail. When Giganox is enraged, its skin will darken and the hit zones for its head and tail will flip. The head will harden and the tail will soften. Its weakest spot for cutting weapons is actually his stomach, which isn't always easy to hit like his heads are, due to how low he is to the ground. Giganox's whole gimmick is having two things that look the same, and there are many moves that encapsulate this pretty perfectly. His ceiling attacks both look similar, his egg laying is a mix-up and the animation looks similar to his roar, and his body slam attack and gas AoE clouds both look pretty similar as well. You'll need to learn the subtleties of these attacks, what attack would make sense or would be most dangerous to you in the moment, as well as which head you're by, in order to consistently avoid them.
I recommend you bring some dung bombs if you're worried about or have trouble with the pin attack. Giganox's pin attack is arguably more dangerous than the others we've faced so far. If this is your first time fighting Giganox, go to Area 4 and a cutscene will play. He should still be there in subsequent hunts if you get there in time. If not, then check Area 7. Our strategy for Giganox is to hit his stomach or back legs from the sides, avoiding attacks as necessary. The most dangerous ones would be his body slam, poison gas AoE, and the poison egg. Because the egg is so problematic, when he's enraged, that is, when his tail hits on his higher, we'll be trying to break his tail. Breaking his stomach will happen since that's his weakest spot, but I won't really focus on his head. Feel free to go for the extra rewards, but the effect of breaking his head isn't worth the risk of being hit by his double wide bite. For these example hunts, I try and play as efficiently as I possibly can, so I don't usually go for part breaks unless there's a reason. I'll cover the part break rewards later on. Remember you don't have to play exactly how I do. Use what I'm doing as an example, because that's all it's meant to be. When the screen shakes like that, it means you're hitting a pretty weak spot with a high hit zone. Keep it up. Right now I'm thinking, what move can hit me right now? And what will I do for that move? But try and think as if you were Giganox. What attack can hit you right now? Would it be easy to avoid it based on what you're doing? Remember to give that second bite a lot of space. When he hops around, consider sheathing to make your own repositioning quicker. When he's on the ceiling, always assume he'll do the pin move unless you see him do anything else. If an attack is particularly dangerous or hard to avoid, you need to anticipate it, just in case. Now that he's not enraged, his head and tail hit zones have flipped again. Breaking his tail can be a bit tough because of the limited time window you have for it. When you can, try and hit his stomach. If he can't hit that, hit his back legs. If he can't hit that, his wings are fine too. Remember his hit zones. When he lays an egg, you want to destroy it as soon as you possibly can. Try and figure out how many attacks it will take to break one. Having Giggy on the field can make things very complicated. If one ever latches onto you, roll a bunch of times to get it off of you. This will heal it and give it more HP, so try not to let it happen. This is interesting and worth noting. He can turn seemingly in 360 degrees when starting one of these attacks. Just because he turns to aim at first, don't assume he still can't hit you. Although the real egg laying move is a large opening, I'd highly recommend you use the time to reposition and get ready to break the egg as soon as you can. Having to deal with the egg is one thing, but breaking the egg and one or two or three giggy is another entirely. You want to stop it before it becomes an issue. The poison attacks can kill Banahabra without breaking them apart. If you need to, you can try to find time to carve them, just be careful. I'm going to use this opportunity to reload rather than just attack him. I could also use it to heal. Remember that not all openings need to be used to attack. Respect the poison egg. His body acts as a prison throughout this move. If you get stuck under him, you're gonna be hit, and it's gonna hurt. 
Notice he turned towards me again, despite facing the other way. That's interesting. You can see right before he body slams, his wings go up. That could help you roll under them and get to a safe spot. I know he's weak, probably hungry, so I know he's likely to try the pin attack, especially because I'm so close. Try and read the situation like that. Oh. Okay, well, if I could just get Baggy to hit me. Well. If you didn't know, spinning your analog stick can wake you up slightly faster than normal. It's not nearly as noticeable as being stunned, though. Alright. I missed his tail whip. Damn it. Okay, dude. Hit me. Oh my god. So really, as I was saying, it's as simple as that. Priorities. Had to make sure. Now that his tail is broken, being behind him is a lot safer. And he's almost dead. There's a pre-laid Giggy Egg in here that we need to take out immediately. Try and bait Giganox to do some other action to give you some time to break this. If a Giggy does jump at you, try and avoid it and kill it as soon as you can. Try and not get discouraged by this fight. I realize I may have made it look a little easy. Truthfully, as I was trying to figure out this fight using weapons like Lance or Greatsword, don't recommend those by the way, it was pretty rough. I would go through almost my whole stack of potions, but as you can see here, I didn't even use all three of my first aid meds. Just stick with it. Even when things seem ridiculous or like you'll never get better, you can and you will. Just don't give up. Also, I was hoping that Elemental Discharge would have finished him off, but I guess he had a bit too much HP. To craft either of the Giganox armor sets, this is what you'll need. When carving Giganox, you can get Giganox Hides, Pale Extract, Giganox Claw, 
venom glands, and uncanny hides. When breaking his head, you can receive Giganox hides, Pale extract, Fearsome maws, and uncanny hides. When breaking his body, you can receive Giganox hides, venom glands, Pale extracts, and uncanny hides. When breaking his tail, you can receive Giganox hides, uncanny hides, and venom glands. When picking up a shiny, you can get Wyvern Tears, Pale Extracts, or Fearsome Maws. And when capturing Giganox, you can receive Venom Glands, Giganox Claws, Uncanny Hides, Pale Extracts, Two Poison Sacks, or Fearsome Maws. Velvety Hide is from the smaller Giggy. They can also drop Monster Fluid. Great Baggy Hide is from Great Baggy. Monster Bone L can be obtained from Giganox, or Barrow. Poison sacks are best obtained from Great Ragi. And Isisium and Light Crystals can be mined from the Tundra. The Blademaster Armor has 6 decoration slots. The chest piece has 2 and the rest have 1. By default, you get the armor skills Have Stun and Status Attack plus 1. With 4 decorations and using the cap instead of the helm, you can get Status Attack plus 2, Negate Stun, and Thunder Resistance plus 5. These decorations are 1 blue Steadfast Jewel, 2 pink Disabler Jewels, and 1 yellow Thunder Resistance Jewel. The tricky decorations this time around will be the Disabler Jewels, requiring Benahabra parts. That could be a huge turnoff right away, but let's look into it a bit more, because it's not as bad as you might think. Each Disabler Jewel requires 3 Benahabra Wings and 2 Benahabra Spines. If we look at the carve data for this monster, and low rank, the wings will drop 32% of the time but the spines have a drop rate of 10%. That sounds bad. Fortunately, the traveling peddler literally sells Benahabra spines, making that material a non-issue. They're pretty cheap, too. That just leaves us with the wings. If you really want to go for this, there's no way around it. But 32% are pretty good odds. Bring a full stack of poison bombs, optionally bring some combined materials, go on the 3-star quest Facing Delicacy to slay 20 Benahabra, use the bombs, trying to hit more than one at a time, carve them, rinse and repeat. The reward box on quest completion can give you wings, and if you set up the green incense for the insect trapper, you have a very small chance of getting wings there as well. But any chance is a good chance, you never know. In summary, buy the spines from the peddler and farm the wings from that quest and the insect trapper with the green incense, using hypnotic pollen or honey to improve the output. <sighs> Moving on, status attack will increase the status value of your equipped weapon. Status attack plus 1 gives you 10% more, while the plus 2 version gives you 20%. Let's take the Giganox Longsword, Bleeding Cross, as an example, as it has the poison ailment. By default, it has 30 poison. That means when your attack applies poison, it will add 30 to the buildup of the poison to the monster. A quick explanation of how status works is like this. When you attack with a melee weapon, there is only a chance that the status is applied. You'll know it's being applied because you'll see a special effect depending on the status. For poison, it's a purple cloud. This chance is about every 1 in 3 hits, I believe. So, 10% of 30 is 3, meaning our end value with status attack plus 1 would be 33. 20% of 30 is 6, giving us 36 with status attack plus 2. That doesn't sound like a lot, and to be honest, it's not. The only real reason to take this is to make applying statuses more consistent. On paper, all you need to do to apply a status is hit a breakpoint. But in practice, if you're not able to keep up the pressure, the monster may recover from a status buildup. Usually every 5 seconds without having the status applied, it will recover around 5 to 10 points. Meaning your breakpoint could be different. Having status attack up will give you a bit more breathing room. Let's look at a practical example. Arjuros has an initial poison buildup limit of 60. After being poisoned once, the second time will require 140. If we assume every third hit will inflict poison, it will take us around 6 hits to apply poison the first time. When a monster is poisoned, it cannot be poisoned again until the current poison wears off. So, two applications, between 4 and 6 attacks roughly speaking, having 33 or 36 poison instead of 30 won't change how many applications you need, so technically, the armor skill isn't doing anything for us here. Unless the monster recovers a little, which may be the case for some particularly dangerous or mortal monsters. Let's assume the poison wears off, and he now has a limit of 140. With no status attack skill and with status attack plus 1, we will need to apply poison 5 times in order to poison our zeros. But this time, with status attack plus 2, we only need to apply it 4 times. Because 30 times 4 is 120, 33 times 4 is 132, both values are lower than 140. 
36 times 4 is 144, which meets that breakpoint. So, status attack plus 2 in this case actually makes applying poison from 0 faster than without. So, hopefully that explains why this skill isn't terribly relevant, but there are still two completely valid reasons to go for this skill. First, is if having that little extra status helps breach a breakpoint that you otherwise couldn't, and second, is to make applying status more consistent, to give you more breathing room and to let you be less aggressive but not losing out on efficiency. If that sounds good to you, or you just want to min-max your status output, this is the first armor set from a monster that buffs that sort of thing, and you should consider picking it up. I'll leave a link in the description to a spreadsheet with all the monster hit zones and status buildups. Remember that while I only talked about poison in this whole example, this applies to every type of status ailment, so you can use this set for sleep or paralysis as well. Not KO though, that's technically a separate system with its own skill that buffs it. While you're likely going for this armor set for the status attack, stun negation is potentially life-saving if you find yourself having trouble with being stunned. And thunder resistance, or really any elemental resistance, is always nice. Especially considering we're going up against the thunder wolf Zenogre sooner rather than later. With the armor setup as I recommend, you'll have 21 thunder resistance, which really isn't that bad. If nothing else, you could consider getting this armor just for that. Or just for how it looks. I think it's pretty cool. Kind of vampire-like, I think. The gunner armor has six decoration slots. The chest piece has two and the rest have one. By default, you get the armor skills status attack plus one, have stun, and the negative skill health minus ten. Unfortunately, again, we'll need more decorations to get the same skills as the blademaster one, as well as one slot in our weapon or charm. In particular, we'll need three Disabler Jewels, one Vitality Jewel, one Vigilance and one Steadfast Jewel, and one Thunder Resistance Jewel. Refer to the Blademaster Armor section for more info on the Disabler Jewels, as well as the Status Attack skill in general. If you use the Giganox Light Bow Gun, Poison Stinger, it will have an open weapon slot for you to use. And it can also fire level 1 and level 2 poison shots with a capacity of 3 and 2 shots respectively. This bow gun also rapid fires poison level 1, but has strong recoil. If you want to poison a monster, this is a decent option. It also just looks pretty good, which is a valid reason to go for it. That's all I have to say about this hunt. Giganox can really get out of hand and make life difficult for you if you let it. But if you stay on your toes and learn his moveset, you'll be able to take him down every time. Good luck. You're making great progress, so keep it up. Until next time.